there's been a number of videos on this bike in terms of design, but what is it like to ride? That's what we're talking about today. The all new 2023 Bianchi Ultra Pro. This is one of three in the lineup. There's the RC, the top of the line, the creme de la creme. That's the one being ridden in the Tour de France currently right now. The Pro is the middle of the bunch. It has the counterbill system on the back of it. And then we have the Comp, which is gonna be the baseline, the least expensive out of the three. Now, in terms of design, this is a radical departure from the previous Ultra that we saw from years back. They're calling this a hyper bike in terms of its design and performance. They're claiming a number of watts faster when you're going over 50 kilometers an hour. Not many of us do that, but I can say it is definitely a fast bike. So what I'm gonna do now is talk to you a little bit about my setup here, then we'll talk about what it's like to ride. My setup is a Campagnolo Super Record 12 speed EPS uh, group set with the Bora WTO 60 wheels. Now, the Pro does not come with Campagnolo. You cannot order from the website that way. A spin axis here in Singapore was kind enough to allow me to uh, purchase the frame off a SRAM axis setup and they moved over my components here. And also big thanks to KH Cycles in Singapore as well for helping me with the Campagnolo group set. I've had this for years. It was on my Basso Diamante SV and my Ridley Noah Fast prior to that. So I'm a big fan of Campagnolo, t-shirt and all, and it absolutely looks beautiful here on the Bianchi Ultra Pro. In terms of the pedals, I've got the Garmin Vector 3 power meter pedals. I've got the Garmin head mount here, the light and the Vario radar in the back. For the saddle, I've got the Specialized S-Works 3D printed power saddle and the entire weight for this size 55 bike comes in at 8.3 kg it's not that bad considering what i have on this it's not a weight weenie bike by any stretch of the imagination the pedals are heavier the wheels are a little bit heavier being a 60 versus a 45 that comes from campagnolo and of course the lights and the radar do add a little bit of weight as well but the great thing about this bike in terms of performance is don't look at the weight numbers how it performs on the road is very very different we're going to talk about that in just a second in terms of my setup here let's talk about the cockpit really quick because this has been a topic of conversation it does resemble a cervello s5 to some degree but i will say that with the positive tilt upwards from the stem to the handlebars you know obviously the head tube is a bit shorter here but this positive tilt does make it a little bit more comfortable as a matter of fact i previously owned the ridley noah fast that's a much more aggressive bike on the front than this is from the stem to the handlebars where this is more positive now uh, when i did get this from spin axis all set up all my spacers were the, to the max you do have to cut to drop this unlike the cervello s5 where you can just use spacers up and down i went down just a bit and i'm kind of liking where this stack is at right now it's not slammed but it's good enough where it's comfortable and i still can get into an aero position relatively easy with it now in terms of the setup with the stem and handlebar there are limited configurations from bianchi at this point in time case in point a size 55 comes with a 110 42 setup 110 length for the stem 42 width for the handlebars now my fitter tim from new cycles here in singapore who fitted me for this bike recently said i probably would be optimal at a 142 but obviously if i work on my core a little bit more and get more flexibility then the 110 will be fine for me and um, what we did do is also raise the hoods up a little bit more to be a bit more comfortable and tilt them in this bar and stem setup though is quite comfortable and it is very solid it feels really good as a matter of fact what i like about these bars is actually the top of them right here where you put your hands on if you're going to be climbing or just want a little bit of a rest from being in an aero position they are very comfortable in the hands so you're not going to feel any sort of pressure how some of these thinner bladed bars feel when you're grabbing it for a period of time where it actually could hurt the, your, your palm of your hand you don't feel this at all with that it's very rounded and it's very very comfortable you're going to see the garment mount coming out from the middle of it it's bolted in it is well secure and i like the way that it's integrated it absolutely looks fantastic now in terms of the rear chainstay and bottom bracket they're very thick and they're built up very well case in point we have the countervail system in this which is going to give you a little bit more comfort as a lot of bianchi riders know this is the first time i'm encountering the countervail system and there were two things that i heard about it a it's great for long rides because it really dampens the vibrations on the road and it's much more comfortable but b it also sort of dampens that acceleration experience or that feel when you're riding the bike and that i can attest to and i'll talk about that in just a second when we get to the riding but if you look at the bike it's designed for power transfer first and foremost and that's the thing that i noticed as soon as i pushed on the pedal is actually how quick this bike goes even on climbs it helps a lot on climbs especially with that power transfer to give you some reference points of my bikes that i previously owned it was a basso diamante sv the ridley noah fast and the cipollini rb1k the one so i'm used to sort of faster bikes uh the slowest might have been the basso it's not as aggressive as the other two but it's still a relatively fast bike this performs in between the rb1k the one and the ridley noah fast in terms of fuel and performance the first thing you're going to notice on this bike is actually the front end and how it feels 
It is very nimble, it's very light. It feels much lighter than what the bike weighs. So I don't wanna say it's twitchy because it's not necessarily twitchy, but you don't have to put a lot of force or a lot of power to move the bike where you want it to go in terms of steering. So when you are riding the bike, if you are gonna smash down on the pedals, you're gonna get into the drop seat and you're going to go, you don't need to put that much force on the front end of the bike if you know what I'm talking about. Because of the bar and the stem and the design of the bike, definitely get a bike fit. I would not recommend just going to a bike shop, picking it up and taking it home and riding it. You may feel a little bit uncomfortable and a little unsettling because this is an aggressive bike, make no mistake about that. But with that said, this is a very comfortable bike to ride for longer distances. And I will give credit to the counter rail system to making it more comfortable. It is, uh, it soaks up a lot of the bumps on the road. You really don't feel much of it. I mean, obviously any big bump you're gonna feel, but small little bumps, it just glides over it, no issues at all with it. Personally, if I could do it all over again, I might go for the RC because based on what I'm hearing about the RC and the Pro, the RC is still quite comfortable, just a little bit more responsive and feel. And that is kind of what I like my road bikes to be. Not to say I dislike this, I like it a lot. It's better for probably long distance rides, but I like to feel that acceleration. I like to feel that power when I push down on the pedals. And you get it here, but not as much as you probably would get on the RC. In terms of aesthetics, it's a beautiful looking bike. Now, looking at it at first on photos and in video, you may think to yourself, oh, I don't like the look, it's too aggressive. This is not the Bianchi that I'm used to seeing. But when you do see it in person up close and you do get a look at the paintwork and the lines of the bike from the top tube, the down tube, the head tube, of course, we've got these, these fins right here, which I've actually had a black decal put onto it because the Pro just has a solid chalice color. I put that on there because I like that RC look. But it's one of these bikes that's rare to see on the road at this point in time. So when you people do see it, they comment, wow, that is really nice. And I've had that a few times when I ride. So, I mean, look, we buy bikes for the aesthetics, we buy bikes for the performance, and we buy bikes for the feel and for the history. And Bianchi being the oldest bike company out there, there's a lot of history in this bike. It's radically different from what we're seeing, but if you get used to this, you're gonna really enjoy it. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the Bianchi Ultra Pro. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Any questions you have, I'll try to answer them for you. And if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of camera reviews here, but I also love to talk about bikes and more content on bikes is coming your way. Thanks again, guys, and I'll chat to you soon.